like everybody's getting settled. Um, joining us now is ACC Linebacker of the Week and Butkus Awards semifinalist Jeremiah Trotter Jr. Uh, I'm gonna break protocol here as well, just since he's here early. In about six minutes, he'll be named uh, both the Nagurski Defensive Player of the Week and the uh, Ben Narek Award oh, wow. Player of the Week. So congratulations, Jeremiah. Thank you. Providing that to y'all on embargo for the next six minutes. Uh, <laughs> joined now by Jeremiah. Y'all fire away with questions whenever you're ready. Jeremiah, to hear that recognition, so much acknowledgement for your play, um, certainly this past week, but no doubt that is representative of, of your resume as well. What's that mean to you? How do you take that, that sort of recognition? Uh, you know, it, it means a lot. Uh, I just give glory to God. I know. Without him, I wouldn't even, wouldn't be in this position. Have the opportunities that I have. Uh, that's first thing. But it also uh, just goes to show, and like you know, just proves to me that I just got to keep working hard, uh, day in and day out. Keep doing what I can to help my teammates. And uh, you know, recognition like this will come uh, as long as I just keep my head down and keep grinding. And uh, it just you know, just a little bit more, just a fuel to, to the tank to go in and practice and you know, just give it all I got to try to get better at my craft. Yeah, I, yeah, I'd probably say like um, a little bit earlier in the year it was a, a little bit of a bother, but I still had enough to be able to go out there and just do what I could for my teammates. Um, but I, I'd probably say, you know, after that second, third game, uh, I was back to like 100% completely. I was able to get that burst back that I really uh, I could really feel. Um, but, you know, I just thank God, you know, he, he carried me throughout this whole year, just being with me the whole way and helped make my body right, allowed me to get prepared, you know, each week. And um, you know, I'm glad, you know, I was able to get that, you know, that hamstring right so I could uh, go out there and just play to the best of my abilities. When, when I guess you came down with that injury during camp, right? And yeah. You were held oh, out. Yeah. How concerning is that in the moment? Just you've been around football all your life, just knowing how often that can be a nagging thing through a, a long period of time. Yeah, de definitely at the time, um, it wasn't something that I would have liked to have happened just because I – I love to be out there, you know, working with my guys out there on the practice field, and also just being able to get those those reps. Um, but you know, I did what I could, uh, got the mental reps, had a great tra training staff, uh, you know, helped me get back, you know, to, to prepare my body the best uh, that they could, and um, I really appreciate them for that. But you know, when things like that happen, you just gotta just keep moving forward, find a way to you know get better uh, any way that you can, and um, I'm glad you know I was able to do that. What type of uh, critique or feedback did you get from your dad about Saturday's performance? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, he definitely, you know, loved me up. He uh, called me after the game, you know, just excited, just saying <laughs> uh, I had a great game and whatnot. Um, he gave me my praise, and then he moved on to the corrections that I need to make um, as far as, like, the plays I messed up. And I, I definitely, you know, after the game, I knew there were some plays I wish I could have had back and did a little bit differently as far as my technique-wise. And, um, you know, he does, does a good job, you know, making sure, you know, loves me up, uh, gives me praise, you know, when I, I have a good game, and, but also lets me know that there's still things that I can get better to even have a even better game. Um, so that, that's pretty much how it went after the game as far as my dad coaching me up and whatnot. When, when you're taking on a running back and setting him up, how much of that is brain, <laughs> you know, and your craft, and how much of it is just athletic ability? Um, I probably said, you know, just a lot of it is just like tech, technique, um, going in practice and trying to treat every single rep if I get the opportunity while I'm blitzing, um, a running back, just trying to, you know, make sure I'm tuning like a game rep. Uh, and then also it's just a lot of feeling of what, you know, I feel like the running back, if he's sitting light or if he's leaning a little bit too much, uh, that can really depend on like the type of move I make. Um, but a lot of it is just, you know, technique, you know, working on it in practice and then as well as, um, you know, just getting a feel for the game and a feel for the type of running back that you're pass rushing. How much of that feel was developed from watching those guys on film coming in? Uh, a lot of it was from, you know, film, watching them, how they block linebackers and, like, the type of technique that they – was like, their go-to um, when they block the linebackers. So the film definitely helped a lot as far as, you know, um, my mindset or my plan when I uh, was rushing those running backs. Uh, definitely got to, you know, set up the pass rush move so they can't, you know, pick up on it really easily. Um, but, 
Uh, I like I like the they might watch they might be watching these interviews. I don't want to give them away my secrets, but it definitely you know just gotta get a feel for the uh, how they how they're you know playing you, how they're trying to block you, and then film watch film on them and how they block other linebackers whenever they're pass rushing. Um, so a lot of it is just you know just a lot of just work, a lot of film study, and then a lot of just you know getting a feel for the game and a feel for how they each individual ind individual running back is going to uh, pass block against you. was it for you guys to get a win? How have you seen it affect your teammates already just a couple days since? Uh, you know, it definitely was a really big win, an emotional win for us, especially, you know, just um, the type of win it was for, you know, Coach Sweeney when it, getting that 166. Um, but, I mean, we, we were really hungry, hungry for a win, and uh, I feel like that really showed out there on the field, just the way that we played. Uh, on both sides of the ball, just the type of effort that you know everybody all around was had to um, come out with a win. So I was just really proud of my guys. We just got to carry that men mentality on to uh, get another win this weekend. Just going back a couple weeks, um, I know Coach Wayne talked about the speech you gave post game in Miami. Um, they thought you maybe said more words in that like, three minutes than for three years. And what, what, what brought that out of you? In that really, just you know. Um, I felt like that our guys in that moment coming off that loss, uh, overtime loss, that was something that, you know, we needed to hear. And just uh, something that is like to give, see the, allow my guys to see the bigger picture as far as, I mean, we can't do anything about that win right now, but what we can do is get back to work and not lose again uh, on that, that upcoming week. So, um, it just really just trying to, you know, make sure that mindset was right, uh, make sure guys had, didn't like get down and like let that that loss linger. Um, just have a forward thinking type of mindset and not you know quit or anything like that. Just like keep try, keep trying to get better, keep trying to correct the mistakes and just keep working to finish out the season strong. Have you ever given a speech like that even going back to high school or whatever? Or is that completely different? Uh, I, I really was more one one of those guys. Um, I like to get guys one on one, talk to talk to guys like that, uh, lead by example. But uh, I was more like a one-on-one -on -one type of guy. Like I come to you know pull guys off to the side, give them some motivation and whatnot. But that's probably one of the f maybe first or second times that I actually like just in front of the whole team, I actually stood stood like stood up and uh, said some words. Yeah. Well, why did you feel like it was? Is it just that you have recognition now that I'm somebody people look to and I need to have the voice? Or what kind of makes you do that for the first time? Uh, I feel like that was a part of it. Just um, you know, you got definitely have to have respect for you uh, from your teammates. For the, what you're saying to actually mean something for them to actually listen, uh, you can't be a guy that you know isn't about your business or co contradicting what you're actually preaching to your teammates. So, uh, just being able to gain that respect and um, allow God to be able to actually hear the message, uh, that's a big part of it. And uh, like my decision as if I'm going to speak up and actually be uh, one of the guys or somebody that is going to actually talk to the whole defense or talk to the whole team as one. Oh yeah, he he definitely you know over the years he definitely talked to, told me that um, you know I'm a good I'm a good leader definitely by example but I got to be more vocal um, uh, in the locker room you know and I feel like you know over the years I've definitely got better at that as far as just even out there on the field just trying to get the defense lined up get guys moved around get the calls out and uh, so he definitely just over the years he's seen just my development on like as a leader and uh, being more vocal uh, develop over time. And he's, you know, just, you know, been preaching to me all, all these years of how I got to improve on that. And he's definitely seen me improve. What was practice like around here last week? Uh, definitely, you know, high intensity. Uh, we had a mentality of just, you know, bringing physicality to the game. Uh, even the scout team, uh, I give a lot of praise to those guys. They definitely helped us get ready uh, this upcoming week for those, you know, the big backs and, uh, the, you know, the physicality that the old linemen uh, bring. Um, you know, just trying to just, you know, <laughs> run us over basically uh, whenever they ran the ball. And uh, so big props to them. But it was definitely a mentality of like, you know, um, we have to strain. We have to give everything we got and just don't, don't leave anything in the tank. And we have to execute our game plan. And um, I feel like on Saturday, that just like that preparation going into the week definitely helped for us to come out with a win. What does it mean when your head coach 
kind of starts out the week and is like, all right, everybody's job's on the line. Like, look, you prove to me that you deserve to be here. Yeah, you know, that uh, sometimes you got to do that, and that's something that the team has to hear just to make, you know, make you strain a little bit more and really feel that pressure of, you know, I got to get my job done, not just for me, but for the team, for my brothers, uh, for my coaches. And uh, I feel like, you know, the way that, you know, when I watch back on the film, just watching both sides of the ball, that's the type of mentality that people are playing with. Definitely. I mean, um, this is a game of, you know, consistency. You got to be consistent. Um, you know, I've, I've already flushed, you know, last week, and I'm moving on to Georgia Tech, and I feel like that's a lot of what our guys' mentality is. Uh, that was a great win. We celebrated that weekend. Uh, but come Monday, or, you know, I guess Tuesday now, but uh, we, we flushed it, learned, corrected the mistakes, and now we got to move on to the next opponent. Um, and we can't uh, get too high on that, on that emotional win that we had. We just got to focus on what's upcoming, and we got to focus on you know that mentality that we have to bring to that game. Jeremiah, on the film study and the preparation that you put in week to week, how much of that is self-taught versus what you watched your dad do preparing week in and week out? Uh, really, you know, just uh, a lot of it has been what uh, my dad, you know, told me throughout my career, just all the way up to this point. Um, I'm, I'm, I know my dad; he watched a lot of film when he was in the NFL. And just like the process that he went through, game like during a regular game week, and he just tried to instill that into me as well, preacher, t- trying to preach to me how I need to watch film, and uh, how big that is up to uh, you know how you play on a, on Saturdays, just because I mean if you can anticipate, you know, what the offense is going to do out of certain formations, you can get to the ball a lot faster, you can play a lot faster, and you're more sure of yourself and like the movements that you do. So he's definitely like a big part of just. Um, you know, my development as far as like how, how I take film seriously. How old would you say you were when that was really a conversation of like, hey, you want to play like a pro, you got to prepare like a pro? Uh, all the way up through really <laughs> my whole career. I mean, even in middle school, we'd, um, you know, we'd film games. Uh, we'd scout, you know, scout our, t- our opponents. So we'd get a few games of like the opponents that we had in like uh, our Pop Warner League. And then we'd be watching film, you know, uh, me and my dad, and then even like the whole team, we'd be watching film, uh, like the opponent, what we got to look for and what, what we got coming up. So uh, film has always been there, you know, all the way through my career. And, you know, just he's just been trying to instill that into me, like throughout my whole process of just learning the game and, and whatnot. So you've been watching film, I'm sorry, you said from Pop Warner days? Yeah, in Pop Warner days, I even remember just being in, uh, watching film of my opponent coming up. Uh, we filmed the game, the, even my games too. So after the games, we go right to the living room, and uh, we put the put it up on on the TV, and uh, we watch we watch a film of like what corrections I need to make and what I need to fix. Sort of where you were doing the axe job. I don't think you did that really growing up. That just kind of came out of you recently, right? Yeah, I, I really never did it uh, growing up. Um, I mean, my teammates knew who my dad was. They always say, like, you know, you got to do it. But I was kind of just like – because I, I was never, like, the guy that was, like, real – try to try to be, like, real flashy or, like, celebrate. You know, I might get up and scream or something like that. But I'm more like just – I like to make a play, you know, celebrate and, just, you know, just get back and <laughs> move on to the next play. But, uh, you know, once I did it the first time last – I think, yeah, last year against Syracuse, um, it kind of stuck. My teammates liked it. It got them hyped. Uh, my dad loved it. And he told me, he like basically, you know, just said, you know, you got to keep doing it. Everybody's loving it. So I was like, all right. Um, so I'm now just, you know, that's one of the key celebrations, you know, I do after a big play. Was that ever a battle for you of everybody knowing who your dad was and being, was there ever like a sense of like his shadow in any way or, or how have you handled that throughout your career? No, I mean, I, I never felt that way, you know, as far as like there being a shadow, I have to uh, live up to like a name or anything. My dad always told me. Uh, you're your own player. Uh, there's a lot of there's some similarities in our games, but like at the end of the day, you're your own player, and there's no pressure to have to go out there and perform to make him proud or you know just you know live up to a name. He he's to- always told me you know um, even if I wasn't a football player, he he'd be proud of me. He loved me the same way. Uh, so it was really he just him telling me that definitely takes a lot of the pressure off, um, and I really just never uh, felt like. There was pressure at all, and like whenever I go out there, I just know, you know, I just got to prepare, work hard, and like and trust in God. And um, at the end of the day, like uh, you know, 
success will come if you, you know, work hard enough and you try to have faith in God. Do you remember watching your dad when you were little and, like, trying to mimic his moves? Really? I was so young when he was playing. I, I, I don't remember too much, but, you know, uh, as I grew up, seeing, like, highlights you know, here and there, uh, just, like, the way that he would take on linemen or he would blitz and or be in coverage sometimes, I, you know, I try to take, you know, notes from that and apply it to my game because he was, you know, a really good football player, a really uh, talented linebacker in the NFL. Um, so I definitely try to take notes from, you know, watching if I see, like, highlights or, like, clips here and there uh, from his game. I guess um, you have a couple of pick six now, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm not sure how many pick sixes he had in his career. I know there is a clip of one that he did have. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure the team he was, it, what team it was, but he did have a pick six. He did. Uh, I've seen that clip, uh, that highlight before. Um, but I'm, I'm sure he was really good in pass coverage as well and had his fair share of uh, interceptions. Yeah. Yeah, was that interception was a result of film study. Is that is that something you did see in film, and that's why you were able to make that play? Uh, I feel like, you know, the, um, the formation and something, you know, just seeing, like, the alignment of the wide receivers or the wide receiver in that situation did help, and, you know, seeing that on film and uh, just trying to narrow it down to the amount of routes that he could run out of that in relation to my responsibility. So uh, being able to watch that on film definitely does help. And uh, I was able to, you know, just feel the wide receiver, see where he was going, and uh, also had eyes on the QB right there uh, to be able to make a play for my team. Any questions for Jeremiah from Zoom? Jeremiah, what's your favorite thing about your dad and your relationship? Um, I'd probably say just being able to separate football and, um, you know, being a dad. I mean, he knows, you know, you can't be a coach all the time, but, you know, uh, it definitely helps, you know, when he's a coach. But also he can, you know, when the football is done uh, in the off season or just, you know, just other times, you know, just ask me about my day, ask how class goes. Uh, and then we just, you know, talk about what we got going on in life. But, you know, just being able to separate the two and not always being a, a coach. Anybody else? All right. Thanks, Rob. All right. Thank Thanks. you.